today I will teach you something about the ICM basics and also we will do the square cube tutorial uh, for this tutorial the basic steps and geometry are taken from the ICM help so you can find the these same steps and the geometry in the ICM help so this is our agenda for today uh, I will uh, I will explain you some basics about the geometry operations and the importance of build topology. Although for this tutorial the build topology is not, uh, not necessary, but it's very good uh, very good tool for uh, making the connectivity, for executing the curves from the geometry, and also to repair the geometry like holes, etc. And then I, I will explain something about the O grid, C grid, and L grid. Uh, in this tutorial, uh, we will be using the uh, half O grid with the one face selected. I will explain the complete theory of the O grid uh, just now, and also uh, when we will be doing the tutorial on the square cube. And also, I will explain the uh, different relationship of the different type of O grids to the Warfarin blocks, and then I will uh, give you some basics about our hints about the uh, association of vertices and points to edges and curves. Then the setting the general mesh parameters from the mesh bar setup. And then I will uh, show you the pre mesh and the quality of the mesh we achieved and the scan plans to display the mesh in the interior of the domain and to highlight the problems if there are some and then the conversion of the um, this pre-mesh to the unstructured mesh and output as a fluent mesh file so uh, during this process we also uh, specify the solver and the boundary conditions and then we, then we will put output the mesh file and also I will teach you something about the if we want to change the some boundary conditions then uh, what should be changes made to the geometry parts as well as to the blocking and then I will show you the these uh, meshes in the fluent and I, I will also show you the some quality matrices which are important for the fluent now let's start the lecture So first we discuss about the O block and the work from blocks. In, in 2D, uh, when we are working in the 2D, uh, there is one, uh, one main block uh, which, is a, uh, which is called the fluid block for which you will output in the mesh and you read in the fluent. So that's an important thing which, uh, which is important for, for you. And, uh, for you. And also the Warform blocks. These these Warform blocks are not uh, visible to the user, uh, but they ha they have the importance in uh, relationship to the O blocks. So in 2D, there are there's one O block and there are eight Warform blocks on the side of the main block, uh, as you can sh as you can see on the screen. So the block number four, in the red color, is the main block and the uh, block 1, 2, 5, 8, 7, 6, 3, 0 these are the Warform blocks so they have the they have the some relationship to the O, o grid so we will discuss this in the later slides and uh, in the 3D again there is a one main block in the center of the this uh, geometry and there are the 9 plus 8 plus 9 26 total in total blocks in the war form so the nine blocks on the top of the main block and eight blocks besides the main block and the uh, nine blocks at the bottom of the main block uh, there are three types of the O grid one is the simple O grid or the full O grid second is the half O grid also known as C grid and third one is the quarter O grid or the L grid. Now you can see over here this is the full O grid where the lines of the mesh 
uh, when moving from here and again meet will at the, uh, at the same point on the other hand in the C block the mesh starts from the one end then it move uh, in the round shape and then again go through the other side so they will not meet at the other end also you can observe that the, uh, in the in the case of the full ogid the wolfram block is not uh, affected while in the case of the half ogid the uh, the side on the uh, on the where the half ogid is created the wolfram block is also divided into three parts okay and then the third option is a quarter ogid also known as l grid so in this case we select the two edges and we'll get the this shape in the case of 3 in the case of 3D uh, in the case of 3D uh, the full full grid will be having this shape the first figure is the blocking of the o after the grid so in this case we will get the total 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 total 7 blocks in the 3D okay. so this is the uh, in this second figure I have uh, reduced the size of the O block so that you can easily see the the shape of the O grid so you can see there are the total 7 blocks one is the uh, in the center and the two on the one side on the other side the right and left side left side one is on the top side one on the bottom side and two on the sides uh, next is the half of grid um, the first case is the uh, when the one face is selected so we have, the, we have selected the face the O grid will be passing from the this face and it will pass to the uh, Wolfram block you can see over from, from these figures in the last figure the Wolfram blocks in the yellow color are shown the second case for the half of grid when two parallel faces are selected the faces which are selected the O grid will be passing from the both sides so you can again see that in the Wolfram block the O grid is passed from the both sides then the third type is the L grid the L grid is useful for the geometry shapes which have the uh, which have the base shape geometry so in this case although geometry has a triangular shape but still we are able to create the hexagonal mesh in the geometry the equivalent methods are the uh, Y block and the quarter O block from the vertices the last one the quarter O block from the vertices is the bottom up approach and uh, we will not discuss this method over here so you can see over here the first figure the how the faces should be selected for the L grid uh, the second figure shows the shape of the geometry after the after the operation of the and some with some adjustment of the vertices and the last figure is the figure after the Wolfram blocks are displayed uh, the equivalent method is the Y block in this method instead of uh, applying the O grid we just simply merge the vertices and then we update uh, association and uh, align vertices then we apply the O block uh, Y block so the upper two figures shows the l last uh, the final shape of the geometry uh, of the blocking and uh, the shape of the Wolfram block now you can observe that the Wolfram blocks have different shape in the both in the both cases now observe the also the similarity in the fruit blocks the fruit blocks are same in the case of the L grid and the Y block but the shape of the Wolfram blocks is totally different the shape of the Wolfram blocks is totally different it will affect the letter operations when you are applying the O grid so be careful uh, while selecting the method Okay, now we will turn to the uh, to the ACM 
we are again i will explain these methods 